Welcome to the Modern Stock Car Cup Tour. This afternoon we have race number 14 out of 26 in what will be the first race of the second half. We just got wrapped up with the All-Star Race from Bowman Gray Stadium in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where the All-Star Open was won by Stephanie Larson, followed by a late lap pass on with 13 to go from the 08 car of Patrick Starr, who's starting around mid-pack this afternoon, to win the All-Star Race, even though he had not won a race this season and had gotten into the race by sheer, well, good points. He was running inside the top 10 in points at the time of the end of the first half, and therefore he made it into the All-Star Race. On the front row, we have Creed Daniel and Chase Buck. Creed Daniel, who won at Darlington, and Chase Buck, who won at Atlanta. There's been sort of a streak going on where Ever since the streak that we all know of ended with 11 unique winners after 11 races, now there's been only repeat winners right now. Um, Talladega was won by Ian Korob, which broke that streak. That was his second win, and then the first half was ended by Doug Dolring, who had his second win of the season. Adam a Buck Racing starting second, fourth, and sixth consecutively with Buck, Dolring, and Adama on the outside rows. Time to listen to the driver command. Drivers, start your engines. Well, you heard it. So we are going to get underway from this race here at Phoenix Motor Speedway, uh, or Phoenix Raceway. 63 laps of racing. It's time for our starting lineup. In row one, we have Creed Daniel and Chase Buck. Row two, we have Santiago Alvarez and Doug Dolan. Row three, we have Nolo Hamilton and Brian Adamson. Row 4, we have Ian Korob and Vincent Crook. Row 5, we have Stephanie Larson and Armin Salvador. Row 6, we have Crystal Papa Georges and Luis Aguilar. Row 7, we have Bradley Ryan and Jay Monin. Row 8, we have Luis Alvedo II and Dan Wilkins. Row 9, we have Benjamin Dover and Kristen Coppola. Row 10, we have uh, Brady Wilmington and Tim Moore. Row 11, we have Arthur Xavier and Patrick Starr. Row 12, we have Faris Khalil and Winchy Wolf. Row 13, we have Darian Arnsworth and Kyle Driscoll. Row 14, we have Alejo Iavino and Zayn Thibodeau. Row 15, we have Bryce Durlocker and Jay Burr. Row 16, we have Mitchell Collins and Carl McKinney. Row 17, we have Greg Shetner and Daniel Boyles. Row 18, we have David Hiller and Nelson Reeves. Row 19, we have William Westmoreland and Dakota Bennett. Row 20, we have John Buckford and Will Driscoll. And in row 21, we have Amelia Nielsen and John Buckford. Green flag here from Phoenix in the O'Reilly Auto Parts 500. Three wide into the corner, Santiago Alvarez getting a good run. Bradley Ryan the Oh, the leaders are gonna wreck! The leaders are gonna wreck! It goes to Papa George's hard into the wall. Everybody's piling up on the back stretch because there's not enough room as the leaders wreck on that one. Oh my goodness. Let's take a look at what happened here. Oh my gosh. What a way to start the race. Three wide into the turn two. And then coming onto the back stretch, they completely wreck. Yeah, Creed Daniel starting the wreck. And then Nolo Hamilton behind him. And he goes to the top of the Then everybody starts to pile up. If we take a look from the helicopter view here, look at that. Look at how much. Look at how many cars are piled up in that. That's crazy. Take a look from the 44's view of a Grista Papa Georgia, since obviously he had a lot of damage in that. He hit the inside wall hard, currently running 11th at the time of the wreck. So I see why that wreck sort of happened. Some of the guys in the mid-pack were trying to go 5 wide. I, I repeat, 5 wide. Let's take a look from the 28th view of Creed Daniel, who started on the pole, but is now wrecked on the first lap. Brady Wilmington will be scored as your race leader. Looks like Agrista Papa Georges, Jay Bird, Greg Shetner, and John Buckford will all be going to the garage as a result of that wreck. Which, if that's the case, then that will leave us with 
what looks like 38 cars on the track. I mean, that was a huge wreck, but I think the reason why less cars went to the garage than what was expected was probably because of the fact that um, all the cars that were in the back of the pack were all, were all slowing up to stop. So I think that's what the issue was uh, for, for some of those cars, was that they weren't slowed down enough, and it resulted in them going to the garage. We're on lap 4 out of 63 from the O'Reilly Auto Parts 500 from Phoenix Raceway. We'll be right back after this. We are back from Phoenix Raceway. Brady Wilmington, your race leader. He led for a few laps at Atlanta before losing the lead to the eventual winner, Chase Buck. And Buck is currently running 34th right now as we have 36 cars in the lead. Uh, 36 cars on the lead lap, and then two cars in the 08 and the 21 are lapped down. As we said, the 44, the 15, 61, and the 4 are both, uh, are, are all going to the garage. Your top 10, Wilmington, Alvarez, Corob, Vincent, Brooklyn, Fort, Bradley, Ryan, who's up in the second. Dr. Larson, Louis Aguilar, Wilkins, and Ryan Adema. As, uh, as Patrick Starr and Amelia Nielsen do line up on the inside there to get themselves underway. Green flag on lap six. Hopefully this won't be like the Atlanta race where there were just a bunch of cautions and it took up like half the time. Wilmington out in front. These, these uh, two lap cards here might block the leaders. Uh-oh, Korob got a little bit too far up with the million Nielsen. Oh, Alvarez hits the wall, and he's up in the second goes around. And so does Dan Wilkins. And it looks like they're able to sort of keep on going, as the 77 will sort of grind to a halt, as there's another crash involving Alejo Avino, Wade Driscoll, and it looks like ben Benjamin Dover in the 22. Let's take a look what happened here. Yeah, they were all trying to avoid this. David Hiller was going to pit lane during all of this. And then while they were wrecking up front, as you can see here, the 14 and the 77 went around. If this big camera will stop blocking everything. Yeah, they got sort of messed up there. and But the 14 was able to straighten it out, so it was fine. But then the 54 blows up, causing the 78 to go into the wall, and then the 22 as well taking a hard hit. That was a really hard hit for the 22 there. Yeah, look. Oh, the 54 clipped the uh, the 77. That's why he started blowing up. So as this was happening, they both spin out. Let's take a look from the 31's camera, since he got a pretty good view of it all, even though he was in 30th at the time of the wreck. Talk about a near miss there as Coppola looks like Creed Daniel and Chase Buck they're still on pit lane there's Dan Wilkins, Amelia Nielsen, David Iller so now the new race leader looks like it will be Bradley Ryan as just like with Atlanta because of the drivers, uh, because of the drivers that went to the lane, there's going to be a bunch of lead changes, but they're all going to be under caution. That's what I find kind of funny. But in any case, Bradley Ryan, your race leader, followed by Stephanie Larson. It's like Brady Wilmington, Vincent Crook, and Luis Aguilar in your top five because Patrick Starr is a lap down. Although, although I do think that he's going to get the wave around, to being honest. Yeah, he's going to be scored 31st. That will be on the lead lap. And the cars that are going to the garage as a result of that second wreck are William Westmoreland, Armin Salvador, Mitchell Collins, Wade Driscoll, Alejo Iavino making his debut, and Benjamin Dover making his debut as well. So Bradley Ron, your race leader on lap 9. We'll be right back after this. We're back from Phoenix Raceway, just about to go green. Love how the pace car basically just goes on the pit road before the way before the uh, green flag and green flag, so they kind of got to do it on their own. Bradley Rhyme, your race leader, Patrick Starr, and Amelia Nielsen getting the wave around as they will line up in front of the leaders, and we have a green flag on lap 11. Hopefully, just hopefully, 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 we won't. 
won't see another crazy wreck, but everybody seems to be spreading out again. Wilmington, the inside of the leader, Rat Bradley Rhyme, as Wilmington will take the lead away. They're going to hit against the wall again. Uh-oh, this is not going to be good. Make sure there's no caution. We are still under green, and we are going to complete a lap under green. That's what you like to see. Look at all those guys going through the dog leg. That's one of my favorite things about this racetrack, is seeing everybody go through the dog leg. It's really cool to watch. Vincent Crook now moving up to third. Vincent Crook made his debut at Indianapolis on race nine. Oh! Kyle Driscoll in the fence. Wait a second, wait a second. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is not good. This is not good. Wait. Everybody was running the high line there. You can see Gustav was running the high line. The 80 car, the 17 came down on the 60, or the 80. Then he got turned just like that, and then he got stuck in the fence. He ripped the wall apart. Doug Doring went over. Doug Doring hit the pit wall. His teammate Ryan Adema got in it. Winty Wolf. Two cars were flipping at the same time as Kyle Driscoll quite literally. That happens to me sometimes at these BBMC tracks where the cars get stuck in the wall. Oh my gosh, he went into the catch fence. Wow. Then Creed Daniel hit him while he was still upside down. This is going to require a lot of replays here. Let's take a look from the cockpit of the 80 car of Kyle Driscoll. definitely hit while he was still on his roof. Now I think it's time for the 28 of Creed Daniel to see what he sees as he also hit the 80 car while he was upside down. Everybody just starts piling in. I mean, that's, that's a terrible crash. That is probably the worst crash of the year. But yet again, I said that at Homestead, I said it at Atlanta, and I'll probably end up saying saying it again at some point during this season. Here's Doug Dolring's roof. He got lost up in there. He truly got launched into the air as his camera went broke there. Yeah, look at the 77, trying to get past it, and then Winty Wolf as well. Oh, jeez. There was even more? Yeah, there was even more. The three car went upside down. See what happened to him, the three car of Winty Wolf, it looks like. Yeah, and the Chevy. Winty Wolf, let's see what happens here, because by the time he wrecks, everything's already going, going to down south. <laughs> That is, that is terrible. So they are going to stop the cars right here. They're going to stop them on the back stretch because um, this is going to be a red flag situation where all the cars are going to be stopped. As Nolo Hamilton, um, what's it called? Is your race leader? They're scoring him as 22nd, I think. Yeah, they're scoring him as basically the first guy on the lead lap. So my apologies. Um, Stephanie Larson is your race leader, followed by Luis Aguilar, Vincent Crook, Ian Korob, and Brady Wilmington. They're just going to have them stop here for a few minutes as they clean up the wreckage and debris on the backstretch from all of this. Some of the cars are actually getting told, maybe they're, I think they're getting told to move forward a little bit because they're still, they're still messed up on the backstretch. So they're going to wait for these cars to sort of move out of the way of all of the wreckage and then they will red flag it right here. Just boy, oh boy, what a terrible, terrible crash that we have going on. One more time, let's take a look from the view of some of these other cars as we take a look on this red flag here. Just everything that happened, just quite literally insane as it, as it happened. I mean, here you have it. 
Let's take a look from the hood of the uh, 76 of Faris Khalil. He seemed to be coming in a little bit. Oh, the 76 and the 19 also wrecked. Oh my goodness, this is insane. This is quite literally insane. Yeah, he got wrecked, and then you can see everything is unfolding in front of him. I get past it, and he eventually does, so... Now, how about the 43 of Arthur Xavier? He kind of hit some stuff as well along the way, running 21st at the time of caution. <laughs> Yeah, what an insane crash that, that happened there. I mean, that is quite literally insane. So, folks, as we are, are under the red flag, this is the crash that brought us here. Maybe hang this on your wall, because this is probably the most intense crash in a long time, with Doug Dolan quite literally launching 10 feet into the air. Uh, I believe, yeah, that is, uh, that's about seven feet that he's launched up into the air. Just take a screenshot of that because you might not see a crash like that again in the modern stock car cup tour. Quite literally insane as we watch how this, uh, crash unfolded. And while we're at it, let's take a look from the hood of the 92 of Ryan Adama. Since he had to watch his own teammate quite literally bounce ten feet in the air in front of him while all of this was unfolding. Let's take a look. <laughs> but he just got like literally just watched the thing bounce in front of him. See, as you can see, they are stopped on the back stretch, um, or, or near the dog leg. That is, as the yellow flag man, he's still got that that uh that that flag down there, as the um. The, the, as the red flag, it's still insane to me that that was the case with everything that was going on with that. Cr I thought that the first crash was bad enough, but then, pow, that happened. All right, so they are going to lift the red flag, and they are going to get back going on lap 15 out of 63. They'll get back going again. Will they turn off the caution lights? Yeah, they will. So, it's a, probably a good thing that they got it ready when they did, because as soon as they lifted the red flag, they're going to go back under green again. Cars lining up on the inside, the 24, the 08, the 21, and the 14, all lining up on that inside there. Stephanie Larson, your race leader, the cars in the garage after that incredible incident are the 16, the 28, the 43, the 17, the 30, the 80, the 3, the 77, and the 96, as a result of that crash. As of this time, 20 cars remain on the lead lap, and looks like just 23 cars or so are still here while some are in the garage. Regardless, we have a green flag from Phoenix Raceway on lap 17. Please do not mess this up. All those lapped cars are on the inside line. They're trying to avoid... They're really trying to avoid much confrontation. Oh, the leader! The leader, Stephanie Larson, is into the wall! No caution. No caution that we know of, but they just wrecked the leader. Oh, Dakota Bennett as well. Jay Monin is loose. They'll come back around here. Oh my god, that was a really close call. The 93, you saw it, got wrecked. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Tim Moore, Tim Moore slowing down. Why are they slowing down? We got another crash. Oh, all of these cars were going to pit road, and I think that there was a bit of a debacle there. Now there's some cars stopped. 
off of turn number two, as that brings out our fourth caution. You could see that coming a while away with how aggressive these guys are racing. The 13 got a little bit tight. He came up the track. Looks like there was a little bit more smoke here, but I think that was from the Stephanie Larson incident. Oh yeah, 13, 13 tried to stop. The 13 tried to stop because he was trying to go to pit road while he was bound to miss the commitment cone. And then they wrecked behind him. And then 87 got in, 21, 55, 41, 92, 33, whatever. Let's take a look from the hood of the 60 car of J Mon and see what he sees. <laughs> of Tim Moore, I want to take a look from his cockpit view, because I want to see if he lost any speed trying to go. I, I, I don't know if that was the problem. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's definitely what happened. It went down about 8 miles an hour before he left the car behind him. That is exactly what happened. So, we are under the caution for the fourth time. I believe that the leader is being scored as, at the time right now, looks like it will be Brady Wilmington, as some of the cars will go to pit lane. Although there is Carl McKinney out there. I wonder if he made it out front. Carl McKinney finished second in the All-Star Open. He qualified on the pole because of where he was in the point standing. But he was able to uh, get out almost to the front. I mean, you can see damage on that side there, but I think everybody's got damage unless they've been running in the front all day. But the 93 quite literally got wrecked. You don't see too many times in this league, if we're being completely honest here, you don't see too many times where the leader gets wrecked. And this is one of those cases where that happened. It happened. Caution lights are still on. We're on lap 21 out of 63. Your leader, Brady Wilmington, followed by Vincent Crook in second. And then Tim Moore, who got involved in that crash, is still in third. So we'll be back after this. We are back. The 62 of Brady Wilmington looking for his first win. Pacific Racing this year only had one win with Creed Daniel winning at Darlington. Now he has a chance to bring it home, but they still have over half the race remaining. We have a green flag. 12 car Vincent Crook jumping to the inside. He's a, he's a, a little bit of a, uh, I wouldn't say he's inexperienced, but his, his first race was Indianapolis. Oh, Tim Moore in the wall. No caution, not that I know of. And Tim Moore is slowing up. Vincent Crook is slowing up. He's out of gas. No, he, no, he's refiring. So I think he's fine. But now out to the lead is... Bradley Rhyme. Bradley Rhyme is your new leader. On lap 24 of this chaotic O'Reilly Parts 500. And now Bradley Rhyme is going to pit lane. And so is Jay Monin and some other cars. Oh! Tim Moore and now just his second colossal mistake of the day. He now not only missed the commitment cone. Oh, Bryce Durlocker wrecked behind him. That's what that's what brought out the cars in the first place. But here's the controversy that we're talking about here. Some of these cars were going on the pit lane at the time of caution. You could see McKinney and let's see when Bradley Rhyme uh, crosses the commitment cone. Well, when he crosses the commitment line. So he crosses at this point. He crosses there. And the caution is out. Now let's go back a few frames. Is the caution out then? Yes, it is. Now all you have to do is look at when the caution lights come on as compared to when uh, for, for when they come on here. So let's take a look. McKinney going on the pit lane. Does he make the commitment cone? No, because the caution comes out right there so neither of them make the commitment cone but all of these drivers that were trying to go to pit lane like tim moore right here 
he was slowing down so that he could go to pit lane, and then he was, I don't know what the heck he was doing, but he, um, he essentially, to put it quite frank, could have put it quite frankly, plowed into the barriers and took out Jay Monon as a result. So, very confusing, to say the least. It looks like everybody was going to pit lane, and because Bradley Rhyme did not make the commitment code at the time of caution, he was very, very close uh, there, but he did technically enter a closed pit because of the fact that he did not make the commitment cone under caution, so he'll have to go to the end of the pacing line while doing a stop-and-go penalty. So your race leader now, following that debacle, is Dakota Bennett, who is with Pacific Racing. And Pacific Racing has had all three of their drivers in the lead. They are a Toyota-based team out of Oregon that has the 01, the 28, and the 62. The 28 is in the garage, and the 62, let's see where he is. 62 is out on the racetrack, but he is in 7. Some guys are leaving pit lane now, but what a weird, weird race we have here from Phoenix. But Phoenix has a weird shape, so Phoenix has a weird race. We will be back on lap 28 after this. Lap 28 from Phoenix, literally, quite literally, just 16 cars on the lead lap on 19 cars. This is just like Darlington, where half the field couldn't finish the race. Green flag, Dakota Bennett in front. A lot of different leaders. We saw Bradley Rhyme in front for a little while until he got that penalty. Bennett, oh, they're wrecking. And now the leaders are going to wreck as well. Amelia Nielsen hard into the outside wall. Oh, my goodness. Here we go again. Was Nielsen trying to get to pit lane? First of all, Nielsen was wrecked by her own teammate, Stephanie Larson. Yeah, look, Larson, she was trying to get to pit lane. Didn't work. And then, pow, wow, that is a hard threat. I mean, look at all the smoke coming out of that. I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of smoke right there. Hamilton and McKinney are staying out, so Bennett will go to pit lane. He, he started around mid-pack, so. Now Vincent Crook, who started near the front, he's got a little bit of leverage. Because Dakota Bennett, who is the race leader, because he's uh, near the back there. Oh, Bennett's already leaving his pit stall. So Vincent Crook, I don't think he'll be able to really mount to what he had. Unless he just takes fuel. Oh, he's, oh, he only took fuel. He only took fuel, no tires. And he will leave the pit box second to Chase Fox. To uh, Dakota Bennett, that is. Then fourth is Stephanie Larson, fifth is Bradley Rhyme, who is now starting to rebound just a little bit after serving that penalty. Lap 31, you can hear the excitement in my voice from Phoenix Raceway. We'll be right back after this. Green flag from Phoenix Raceway, they're four wide in the corner. Uh oh, they're gonna wreck me, they're gonna wreck me, they're gonna wreck me. Vincent Crook in the wall. Vincent, oh, wow. Brady Wilmington is in it. I think they're just going to wreck the entire field at this point. Because this field is way too uh, happy here. Dakota Bennett will go back to the line as the race leader. I think this is just a survival race, if I'm being honest. <laughs> uh, let's see. The 62 of Brady Wilmington here. He's going to cross the line 14th because he's got a smoking car. It's on fire. Oh my gosh, I just can't believe how many useless cautions there are today. Let's take a look. And I thought that Wellington was running well until the crash, and it just didn't really help his case. Let's take a look from the 92's cockpit of Ryan Adela, see what he sees. I 
Dexler except for the fact that he completely wiped out his car, but it's just insane, and it looks like, oh my god, I think Ethan Mitchell is going to be scored as the race leader. Yeah, because everybody pitted, he literally has no front end on his car, and no rear is it either. This thing is literally a uh, modified run it around in seconds. There's David Iller, Noah Hamilton. I think that because of the fact that basically all of the front runners wrecked, because think about it, uh, uh, Salvador wrecked, Wilkins wrecked, Driscoll, both Driscoll wrecked, Dolrick wrecked, Reeves wrecked, um, Creed Daniel wrecked, Alvarez wrecked, Monin wrecked, uh, Larson I think is still in it, Larson's still in it, Aguilar wrecked, uh, Moore wrecked, Coppola wrecked, David O wrecked, and then now Brady Wellington is the next casualty. I think that this is going to be just like Atlanta, where you have a bunch of uh, cars going to the garage, and then after like the first half, it all dies down, and they have decent racing. But remember, the performance that these races have is essentially what will get them either a race on the schedule next year, or not a race. If they're on the East Coast, they might be in the East Coast Regional, which will be our second division starting in Season 3. Or it might be something different. Ethan Mitchell is being scored as the race leader on lap 37. Green flag! I'm sort of messing up these restarts there. My bad, I messed it up bad last time. Quite literally, uh, 12 cars on the lead lap. Oh, David Iller. Oh, you have to be kidding me. Here we go again. They're wrecking behind them. Bradley Ryan, Carl McKinney, David Iller. Caution is out on lap 39. Ethan Mitchell, though, they still have an opportunity to bring it all back. That's exactly what they're going to do. Ethan Mitchell, your race leader, on lap 40 with that now mangled car. That is, it's almost hilarious to me how that ended up playing out. It looks like he's going to get the free pass. He's going to zoom past us here at 140. He's going to make sure that he gets his free pass. Since he was ahead of the leaders at the time of caution. We do see the leaders going to pit road. Does that mean we have a new race leader? I think that means that possibly Chase Buck could be the race leader. See what happens here, and then we'll go to commercial. Well, they're not really commercial, just me simulating through the NR. And... Yeah, they're still on pit lane, so... They are scoring Chase Buck as the leader. We'll be right back after this on lap 41! 41, and we are... We've been under caution for, like, most of the race now. Well, what do you know? On lap 43, we will be back under green. The leader being Chase Buck, followed by Stephanie Larson, Bradley Rhyme, Ethan Mitchell, and Darian Arnsdorf. Darian Arnsdorf seems to be... The one contender that nobody can touch right now. They're on the back stretch. The 19 and then the OH, the 89 and the 33 are going to line up. The side of them are in front of them. This will be interesting, to say the least. Flag. There we go, lap 44. Hamilton jumping to the inside. I think some of these guys are a little bit slower. Please don't wreck. Please don't wreck. They're going to wreck. They are definitely going to wreck. The 07 is there. Please don't let there be caution. For the love of the Lord. There we go. Back to the stripe, and Chase Buck is your leader on lap 44 without any wrecks. We have to 
wait for these people. There they go, around turn two. Coming in at a hot 140. Larson in second. And as of now, the fastest lap does go to uh, Chase Buck for now with a 25.802. That's just a few tenths of a second shy of the NASCAR record. And you know, the last time we had a race like this where there were cautions throughout the basically the entire first half, and then green flag racing throughout the entire second half, that was at Atlanta for the uh, Sun Truck 500, and Chase Buck won that race. And now at Phoenix, we're dealing with something similar. And I don't know if Larson will be able to uh, chase him down, but he's still got... She's still got about, like, 15 laps, so she's got something good going for her in second. remaining on the racetrack, as if you were not aware. We have 16 cars on the racetrack, 12 on the lead lap. That is the 19 of Chase Buck, the 93 of Stephanie Larson, the 01 of Dakota Bennett running third, it's Terry Narco running fourth, then Guns Alvedo the second running fifth, a Ian Korob in sixth, Ethan Mitchell in seventh, Daniel Voiles in eighth, uh, Vincent Crook in ninth, and Ryan Adema in tenth. Then for your lapped cars, we have David Iller in, well, no, Iller and Bryce Durlocker are still in the late lap. Where's Durlocker? Uh, Durlocker, where are you? There he is, he's running 12. But then your lapped cars are as follows. Uh, Pat Starr in 13th. Then you have the 40 of Bradley Ryan in 14th. But I think he's, yeah, he just left pit lane. But then Carl McKinney running in 15th, and then two laps down is, uh, no, we'll handle. Now, we do have some guys going to pit lane. Chase Buck, your race leader, is on pit lane, but that does mean that the new leader is Stephanie Larson. So, they'll come back and strike on green flag pit stops, and that will pick up Dakota Bennett once again as the race leader. I'll go check the pit lane here. When does he leave pit lane? And do other drivers come in? Here comes Patrick Starr. Bennett still being scored as the leader with Gustav in second. Ten laps to go, by the way, from the O'Reilly Park 400 through Phoenix Raceway. I think this is just Chase Buck taking a long time off the road. It's, yeah, he's still there. He's getting work done on his car, probably. Right now he's running 13th. And is actually being scored as 14th now, because he's a lap down. He's a lap down. I don't know if he'll be able to gain that ground back, but I don't know if anybody's going to pit road. There's Ian Korob going to pit lane. It's very sporadic, if I'm being honest. It's very sporadic. Because when you have 16 cars on the racetrack, not everybody is on the lead lap. It sort of gives the whole game away. So Chase Buck does lead pit lane with a new car, now that he's uh, got all that damage fixed. He's going to be able to beat out Stephanie Larson who is running 12th now. And we do have some more cars going to pit lane. Arnsdorf, one of them. The others being Boyles, Mitchell, basically the wheel and modifiers. Let's see who else is going in. Uh, that looks like that's about it, and nobody's really leaving pit lane. So now not even 10 cars are on the lead lap. I just find that incredibly hilarious. 
Now Dakota Bennett and Guzal are coming in, those race leaders. And now Vincent Crook as well. All the cars that were not on the lead lap are now getting back on the lead lap thanks to these pit stops. Leaving pit lane is Durlocker. And now Arnsdorf leaving pit lane. They're scoring Ryan Adema as the race leader, by the way. Ryan Adema, your new leader. And now he will slow down for pit stops. Adama was the leader, but I think now... Yeah, they're still scoring against Adama. Interesting. I think Adama's got to beat him off pit lane, but I don't think that he'll do that since his pit stall is all the way near the front. Yeah, here's his pit stall right here, right behind Nolo. Don't think they're going to be able to beat anybody out. He's right across the start-finish line. That's the that's the interesting thing. So he's going to leave pit lane. The question is, does that still retain him as the leader? He's going to try to beat out Boyles here, and he does do that with relative ease. My question is, who's the race leader? Is it Stephanie? Let's see. No, it's the 40. Bradley Ryan is your new leader. Okay. They're scoring Bradley Rhyme as the race leader. How about that? The native of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's got about a three-second lead over Larson, uh, Guzalio for second, Chase Buck, and Dakota Bennett. So a late pit stop from Ryan Adam costs him the lead on lap 59 out of 63. Back to the stripe. There we go. He's going to lap down uh, Bryce Durlocker. If you remember the Daytona 500, that was one of the craziest things. Oh, Rhyme's going to pit lane. Bradley Rhyme is going to pit lane. I think that will mean that Stephanie Larson is the race leader. Stephanie Larson won the All-Star race. Now she's hungry for more. It's back to the start-finish line off of turn number four. Three laps to go from the O'Reilly Auto Parts Car 100. Wow. Yeah, they are scoring. The 93 is the leader. Does the 19 jump to the inside? Looks like he's going to at least make some sort of a move, I think. Into turn three. No move yet. Back to the stripe. Oh, Larson almost got turned by the 19. Larson already got wrecked before, and she's now back in the front with two laps to go from Phoenix Raceway. Chase Buck really close here on the inside. He's on the inside. He is there. He is there. Now he pulls back a little bit. Back to the stripe. White flag. One more left to go from the O'Reilly Auto Parts 500. Chase Buck on the inside. He's trying to make a little bit of a move here. They are side by side in turn number one. Chase Buck going back to the lead. Does he clear Larson? He clears Larson on the back stretch. I think that I don't think she'll be able to beat him back to the line. Coming off of turn number four, it's a last lap pass from Chase Buck. He will win his second race of the season at Phoenix Raceway on a last lap pass. Oh my God. I am sorry, the 11, the 19 was a lap down and I didn't know it. I just, oh my God. I just did a Marty Reed, didn't I? Stephanie Larson is your race winner. That was not a lap, last lap pass. Chase Buck had just put himself one lap down instead of two. Oh my gosh. This is just like Atlanta from last year with Larry Barker and Justin Melillo. Oh my gosh, what did I just do? Oh my gosh. Stephanie Larson's your race winner. We'll see you guys next time at Las Vegas.